for this guy who lives and who lived a life of fall in line or die, or specifically Varus is just die. Yeah. Um, that you know, for him, it's like what? What's that? You 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 don't bend the knee. You don't know who I am. Yeah. I have a million followers on Insta. Like, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> Welcome to Casuals of Ruterra, episode 117. I'm your host, Ryan, here with the other host, Hatch. Oh, what's up, everybody? Who's ready to talk about some more bars? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love them? <laughs> for for those of you who've been enjoying this extended uh, Varus stint, uh, we're happy you enjoy it. For those of you yes. who may not like Vor- Varus or his story, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, like... <laughs> Let, let me, let, I'm going to clarify here. Yeah. For those of you who don't like their story, Ryan, sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm not. I, I love Varus. I love the story. I love the champion. So I'm not going to apologize. All right. Like, go ahead. Put me on blast. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. One thing we both agree on, though, is housekeeping. That That is going to happen. And that's a top. That's a top. You listen to us everywhere. Visit us at podcastcore.com. Remember, that's C-O-R for all of our info. Email us at podcastcore at gmail.com. Follow us on all the platforms because that helps with discoverability, and we appreciate that. Uh, Leave a like and comment so we can hear from you. And tell a friend to make up for lost time by listening to the Casuals of Runeterra podcast. So much lost time. So much lost time for them. (laughs) (laughs) So if you listen to our last episode, we mentioned there's a weird timeline thing here that we tried to work around. And for this story, when Darken came out, it came out before the comics of Heartlight and Retribution. But where Retribution leaves off sort of works where Darken picks up. So that's why we organized our episodes as we did. So we hopefully right. you followed through that. If you're just and, hopping in now. Yeah. <laughs> and... And even even if like even if you could argue that we're kind of wrong as far how uh, with how this lines up, um, all the other like our previous episodes, which we would love for you to go go back and listen to those those previous episodes, there is no time gaps there. That is the chronological order, period. Yes. All right, and we we just wanted to do our best to go ahead and put this in an order that is the most logical sense as far as putting the story together. Because when you have three characters put into one, that's a lot. And we're hoping to break it down into bite-sized pieces for you. And here's the final bite. I know you're full, but go ahead. Open up. Here comes the choo-choo train. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> one thing we focused on at the end of the last episode was the mental state of Vars. Or Varus. I know we've been bouncing between that, huh? Varus. Yeah, Varus. Yeah. Whatever. I'm going to go with Varus. So, I mean, it, there's three people in there. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they changed their pronunciation of Varus. <laughs> true, true. So they should just name themselves John Smith. They could have chosen. <laughs> <laughs> They had the option. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so yeah. So now we're now we're following up with John Smith as as John Smith returns to Sharima. <laughs> <laughs> so the mental state of Varus is that Kai and Val have reached a consensus, and they're currently two v oneing mentally Varus. So they had control of the body. Well, where this story starts, we're now in Sharima. Varus is arriving in Sharima. And it seems like he's driving the boat again. And I say that because the actions that are going to take place feel very Vars-like. But if you think about it in the sense that the reason they left Palace was because they were still kind of trying to figure out this relationship and how to keep Vars down. Still a strong, ascended, now darken. Obviously, there are probably moments in their journey across the world looking for a solution in which Varus would gain control again. And this is one of these moments. And that's how we're connecting the story so it doesn't feel too retconned. Right. Uh, And 
and keep in mind that this is like all of it in its entirety is essentially retconned, right? Yeah. Like this, because this was um, Varus was one of those champions that came out before uh, before Riot kind of really nailed down the Darken story. Yeah, um, and uh, it, you know if 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 we're still around talking about this stuff and that's, you know, going into the retcon stories is something that everybody be interested in doing, you know, maybe we'll touch on that, but there's no point in speaking about that, which no longer exists. We're, we're going to keep looking at the story of Varus as it stands right now. And right now they, uh, in the, in the story that we covered today of the darkened, they have wandered away from palace mm-hmm. And now this story is going to pick up in the deserts of Sharima with a Varus that is trying to just kind of figure out where the hell are they and what the hell happened to Sharima? Because nothing is as far as what Varus recognizes. Like so the the Darkin Varus does not recognize anything that he's looking at anymore. And he's trying to come to terms with just how much time has passed? Yeah. Because remember, he was literally imprisoned into his bow and then carted to the farthest reach of the world. Yeah. And then buried into a temple surrounded by some of the most spiritually strong and um and devout yeah. cultures possible, right? So this was a culture that wasn't going to be tempted unless pushed to the farthest extremes by the darken right yeah and that farthest extreme was val trying to save his heart light yeah exactly it took the perfect storm to get him out of that situation and with where hetch left off varus being in the deserts not really recognizing what happened noticing that there's remains of a city or something like that ruins that don't didn't exist before Right, he's he's very confused. He was guided here by a bird-like creature, which could be a Vistaya. Uh, but as he interacted with this Vistaya, remember Vistaya usually are very old. Even that creature didn't know what he was, and that kind of pissed him off, right? Because he has an ego about him, and the fact that Darkens have been forgotten from this world, he takes that and twists it into, oh, you know, these creatures, these species are dumb for forgetting how how we existed and what we did and my my kind, they deserve to be extinguished because of that. Yes. And um and really focus or like kind of constantly remind yourself of the idea of Varus's ego. Because mm-hmm. that is something that is a part of all the Darkin because they were originally the ascended and uh, the Darken specifically are the ascended that were just too close to the void and kind of lost themselves, but they were God warriors yeah. that then went mad. And so before they went mad, they were already treated as gods. Yeah. And so then going mad is like, no, I am the apex of this world. I, and there's no one above me. And if either fall in line or die. So then for this guy who lives and who lived a life of fall in line or die, or specifically Varus is just die. Yeah. Um that you know, for him, it's like, what what's that? You 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 don't bend the knee? You don't know who I am? Yeah. I have a million followers on Insta. Like, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> And, yeah. and it's that <laughs> attitude is what's going to like that is going to help you keep your mindset on what it is that Kai and Val are dealing with in this story. <laughs> All right. Because it's it's the, it's less about like, oh, this is how Varus works. It's more of what Kai and Val have to deal with this. They have to put up with that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is where we now get one of the the spirits jumping in here mentally as Varus is going through his own psychotic loops, um, which is Val. And Val comes in here with some thoughts and interrupts what Varus is talking about, and it puts him in an even worse mood uh, because he's defending humankind. He's defending how humans behave because if you've listened to other episodes about Varus, he doesn't concern himself with how humans act, behave, in their nature. So everything they do disgusts him and becomes a reason for their extinction, right? And as he's having this conversation, remember the loop I talked about in which 
There's downtime. The brain gets to do its own work. Varus now has to deal with Val and Kai. He gets pissed off. Some action happens. He gets distracted and gets to shoot things. And then it dies down. Mental time, right? It's a thing like it's a thing that keeps happening. So obviously we hop into some action where Varus stumbles across some of these old ruin, ruins and statues of ascendants that remember he doesn't he's not familiar with, but he is familiar with the magic they're giving off. And he is because that's the magic that was used to imprison them. So he knows this place is old, even though he's from a time older than this place. And then they notice some humans working in that area and the devious thoughts begin. Yeah. Like Varus now is just going to be that guy that always acts on the impulsive thought. Yeah. Um, But we do get like right before we hop into the action, uh, like we get just like one last, you know, kind of gasp out from uh, as far as and I like the way that this is written because, you know, it's the a gasp out from Val. But it's we don't actually know that it's Val because Varus doesn't know who it is. Like, yeah. Varus is just kind of deciding. I think it's this asshole (laughs) (laughs) because again, like Varys doesn't see humankind as just like as, as peers, they are just cattle essentially to him. So he's not going to bother figuring out which voice is which, but there's just this one kind of cry out before we get into the action um, where, you know, it's like, why must you kill them? And, uh, as far as like, well, why must you kill them? That one, you know, he's like, okay, no, this one's Kai. Yeah. <laughs> so like even Varus is like switching back and forth. And and then it's like, oh, well, your people destroyed my kin. And that's the only reason I need. Because Varus is a being that is in, run entirely by vengeance. And it is while he is knocking an arrow pulling it back, making eye contact with his first target. There's just one last, one last word of, so everyone must die. And then we go straight into Sakuga. (laughs) Because like even Varus has decided, even Varus has decided that he doesn't want to answer that question because one mortals mean nothing to him Two, the two voices that are inside of this body that he's possessing are mortals, which mean nothing to him. Yeah. So it's like, no, this is a chance for me to finally just put my headphones on and ignore my roommates. <laughs> so I'm going to put my headphones on <laughs> and ignore my roommates. And we go straight into Sakuga from that point. Yeah. Yeah. And during this moment, after he does his killing, kind of satiates the bloodthirst there's a point where there's only unarmed people left and they're fleeing and he doesn't pursue them and this is an interesting point because the reason he chooses not to to chase them is to him he's like if i do this and kill these unarmed people val and kai will never shut up and then after the sakuga stops we go back into the loop of downtime the brain starts to do its thing and i have to deal with them and that's 2v1 so I'm not going to. And that's yeah. different. That's it's a big moment. Different. That's a big moment for Varys. Because you got to remember where we started. <laughs> if we go way back, Varys emptying his arrows as he protects the temple was an empty shell of a He was no longer a person. He was just a vessel. And then he was in prison. So we're going through this process of essentially rebuilding the person that is Varys, if you ignore the three be- the three spirits inside of him. And this is a good way, very simple way to represent that is now he's making considerations based on human thought. That's yeah. a big deal. It's a very big deal. And, and, and this is also really cool because this is happening in a relatively fast timing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because uh, Varys' story spans virtually millennia yeah. at the very least centuries right yeah but this is hundreds and hundreds of years building up to this part of the story but at this part of the story we had Varys emerge from the well three minds in one body actively killing every single noxian that he that they were able to lock eyes with yeah and then like the end of that killing spree was Varus giving control of the body to Val being like, kill this Noxian. 
and the, well, this unarmed Noxian kill this guy and our pact will be complete. And then that is when Kai and Val are able to kind of really get finally get back together within the shell of Varus. And then from that point, we jump to here. That's a really short timeline as yeah. far as in the grand scheme of Varus's life for Varus to start rebuilding that human emotion. And I do like that, you know, it's like, sure, that is a sense of human empathy as that you could argue, but he's not doing it for empathetic reasons. He's doing it because he knows that he's about to have to recharge his headset and therefore <laughs> won't be able to wear it to ignore his roommates. <laughs> Bringing it and, back around, baby. Bring so, <laughs> so I I love it because it's like yes, like Boris's shell is starting to become like filled with humanity once again, but it's entirely out of spite. <laughs> like, yeah, it is still Boris to the core, and th th I, I think that it's done really well uh, as far as in that vein. <laughs> it's, it's the premise of fake it till you make it. Yeah, <laughs> like we're now getting to the point where it's like Boris is. Uh, uh, Varus is now like just becoming like one of the most petty individuals <laughs> in all of Runeterra, and I'm for it. <laughs> so the the story wraps up. This is a very short story in general, and with him, so he's having these internal situations. He lets the people flee, and where are they fleeing from? Well, the ruins they're working on. He's interested in seeing what's inside this structure because remember, this is all new to him as well, and this is new in a space that used to be familiar to him. So he walks in. There's isolated chambers. He notices some sigils that are very old. Once again, pulsating with that magic he's familiar with. And he notices that there's also statues and some sigils that are older than the Icathian Rebellion, which is a major milestone for him specifically um, in history. And then he sees a chamber and notices that there's burn marks on the stone. It's also glossy from ancient fire. So this is a reference to some old episodes we've done on the Ascended. Just go oh, find them. Yeah. If, they're Shurima, if they're Shurima related, just go listen to them, and you'll understand what that's referencing. And also, if you don't know, when sand is exposed to high temperatures, it becomes glass, uh, which explains the glossiness. What would be powerful enough to turn the sand of a magical place into glass? That, that's huh. a question that you have to answer. I'm not going to give you the answer. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's not we've true, We've given Ryan. you the answer. <laughs> that's, we've given them the answer, all right? Like, yeah, go go back, check it out. And we also gave you the hint, which is, you know, yeah. go follow our Sharima champions uh, because that that's where we that we did cover this. Yeah. Uh, and it's really cool because, you know, this is um, – it, it, this is one of the reasons that we've been so excited to dive into these stories, because now this is all going to start connecting to what we've been talking about uh, since the birth of this channel, really. It's like, you know, the, all of this is connected in one world. They're all coexisting. Um, but this is one of the things that's the most interesting as far as like with Varus's retcon, right? Because, yes, we've discussed what chamber this is. We discussed what happened to make sand in a magical warded place turn to glass. That's a lot of really strong energy and magics, but that's not what's super interesting here. It's the last two lines of this story is Varus. He entered the glow from the smoldering light at his heart, revealing nothing but bare stone, burned black and glossy by ancient fire. Varus sighed. Where are you, sister? Dun 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 dun, and that like especially if you like uh, for someone like me that remembers like Varus's story, which was very much more simplistic before we got re before they got rebirthed as this individual. Yeah, like Varus didn't have like any connections to the physical world, but now Varus has a big one, and now we know that Varus is out there looking for his sister, and uh, and if you've been following. You already know who it is. <laughs> but yeah, go, go, go back and listen. Go back and listen and then hit us up at podcastcore at gmail.com and let us know who you think the sister is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that wraps up our story and wraps up our Varus adventure. Um, it's been a long one, but the two key things we want you to take away is that all of this information hinges on two things. 
First is the flawed logic of Varus, right? We've talked about Darkens before, and what drives Varus is a false premise because he was bad. If you wanted to simplify it, he was bad, but he also thinks he was wronged for paying for his crimes, in a sense. And his motivation is to gain vengeance based on that treatment. We know that's ridiculous. He doesn't care because we're human and he doesn't care what we think. <laughs> now, the next part of that is him rising from the well and still driving that force of you know hate is now conflicted with these two other spirits inside of him, which are playing a part in essentially becoming what is now a consciousness. And that conscience is what's rebuilding him as a person. And now ending the story with him having a goal, you now have someone who's more of a person than they've ever been, who now has a goal outside of themselves. That's a big yeah. deal. That's a good I, place and, to end. And not just a goal outside of themselves, no. but it's a goal that's outside of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Like vengeance has been the only thing fueling Varus when Varus was human. Yeah. To when Varus was an ascended, to when Varus was a Darken, yeah, <laughs> and then to Varus being post imprisoned Darken. <laughs> this is the first time that Varus, the individual Varus, yeah, this is the first time that the individual Varus has been driven by something that's not revenge, yeah, um, and that, and a lot of that. This is one of the reasons why that we wanted to go as deep as we did is because. There's a lot that happens to get Varus to the point of having a goal that's not just getting revenge. And the, the, this was all of it. But I I would love to hear like from you guys. Does, like, is this you know the kind of content that you enjoy as far as going into a deeper dive into like one story because i know for ryan and i we loved this yeah we, yeah i well i say we love this i'm speaking for ryan right now but i loved this i had an absolute it, yeah. blast yeah, yeah it's, so, it's, it's, like, it's it's one of those things where we get to take something surface level give you the information that you need as hetch mentioned this is more of an optional episode you don't really need this information um but if you want to consume it we have it for you Right. And it allows us to get into some meta commentary uh, further into it where we are now. So that's cool. Uh, so if you did stick around with us this whole time, thanks for allowing us to get into this very complicated premise of a character. But I think after listening to this, like many other characters like Nami and other characters we've gone deep on, it allows you to appreciate the character more than just playing League of Legends or just playing Legends of Runeterra. You now have so much, so much more when you look at that character that connects you or makes you care more. Be like, oh, I'm having more fun playing Var Varus because I know what's going on. Yeah. I, yeah, like I mean, and you'll appreciate a lot of like the small things, yeah. like the small details that Riot, because Riot is one of the best companies as far as you know, like taking these stories and implementing them into a game that has no story. Yeah. And like the smallest ways, a lot of the voice lines are going to make so much more sense to you. Uh, and a lot of like some, like the weird times where there's almost like an interaction between characters, you're going to understand that more yeah. uh, when you know the stories. And Varus is one of the most complicated ones. So <laughs> like, you, you know, if you, if you've been, if you're still here, thank you so much and also this is the hardest one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't worry it's uphill from here baby you're like we're we're gonna get you out of the valley <laughs> yeah this is the 301 class so <laughs> congrats you did it here's your masters and with that <laughs> thanks for listening and we'll be back soon with our regular programming yeah take care everybody